Welcome to this short presentation of the Horizontal Optical Dilatometer Misura LT. The Horizontal Optical Dilatometer was first developed by Expert System Solution in the year 2002 and it is protected by two international patents. The design is completely innovative and it is based on two microscopic optics with very high magnification which frame both the ends of the sample. The resolution of the horizontal optical dilatometer is five times higher than the vertical model HT because it uses a sample 50 mm long and the resolution of the optical system is pushed up to the limit of 0.5 micron. Thanks to the use of a light source with a wavelength of 478 nanometers. Misura LT is the only dilatometer which can easily and hassle-free carry out high resolution measurements on very thin materials or on incoherent materials or on plastic materials which cannot be touched during the test. The two optical paths are completely protected and all the optical setup is enclosed inside of a body which is moved by a micrometric control to enable a very precise focusing. The sample is 50 mm long and it can be pressed from powder or cut from the material to be analyzed. The sample is held in place by two refractory rods and it can be supported by an alumina plate. The sample is placed horizontally on the alumina plate or directly on the two rods. If during the sintering process there is a development of liquid glassy phases which may wet the surface, the sample sticks on the plate and the sintering process is disturbed. Anyway, if the sample melts on the alumina plate there is no danger for the dilatometer. This is the main difference between the horizontal and vertical model. The sample of the HT model is set vertical and it is completely free to sinter. Misura LT can be supplied with a heating rate up to 30 degrees per minute and up to a maximum temperature of 1380 degrees centigrade. The two ends of the sample are lighted by two beams of blue light with a wavelength of 478 nanometers. This light with a very short wavelength enables to reach the optical resolution of 0.5 microns per each pixel. This is the measuring window of the software where we can see on the left the images of the two ends of the sample. The measurement is carried out with no contact and with no interference caused by the measuring system. The sample is completely free and it expands or contract with no constraints. A little difference in the friction on the holding rods or on one side of the alumina plate may cause an asymmetric movement on the sample. For this reason, both the optical paths are equipped with linear translator which move the optic in order to keep always the sample ends within the measuring window. This is a recording made during an actual measurement and we can see the independent intervention of the motors on the two optics. The left motor shifts the left optic at 586 degrees then the recording jumps over 600 degrees to show another intervention of the right motor at 636 degrees. Thank thanks to this innovative design, it is possible to extend the measuring range up to 6% in expansion or contraction, refer to the initial side of the sample with no loss in resolution. The measurement 
carried out on both the side of the sample with no contact and with no interference from the measurement system, it is indeed an absolute measurement. It is not like in traditional dilatometers, where the sample is contained inside the measuring head, which is also expanding by itself. If the sample holder is made of alumina, which has a high thermal expansion coefficient, the expansion of the measuring head itself may be much bigger than the expansion of the sample under measurement. For this reason, the result of the test must be corrected applying a correction curve to take in account and cancel the expansion of the measuring head. With the optical dilatometer Misura LT, it is not necessary to carry out the calibration procedure because once the magnification of the optical system is per per precisely defined, there is nothing interfering with the measurement. The blue curve in this graph is the actual measurement on a standard material supplied by the National Institute for Standard and Technologies, while the red dotted curve is the plot of the data of the data certified by NIST. There is a perfect match with no correction applied. The optical dilatometer gives the same results as a traditional dilatometer and it can be used on the same materials with the same test procedure. For example, this is a traditional porous ceramic body with the quartz transition highlighted by the first derivative of the expansion. This is the result of the test on a porcelain body. In this case, the measurement can be extended up to higher temperatures compared with traditional dilatometers. In this case, we can clearly see that the curve above the quartz transition is not quite linear, but it shows a complex behavior. One of the many advantages of the optical dilatometer is the possibility to carry out expansion tests even on materials which cannot be measured on traditional dilatometers. This, for example, is the plot of the thermal expansion measured on an incoherent sample of quartz sand. This kind of material cannot withstand the pressure, even minimal, of a pushrod measuring system, but it can be measured with no problem on the optical dilatometer Misura LT. Even if the material become plastic or liquid, there are no problems for the optical dilatometer. This is a picture of a sample of glass before and after the thermal expansion analysis. The sample was pushed up to complete softening and it becomes shorter compared with the initial sample because the surface tension rounded the two edges. This is the curve obtained on a glass sample. The part of the curve above the glass transition point is wider compared to the result obtained with the traditional electronic push rod dilatometer. At higher temperatures, the curve shows a shortening of the sample, but in this case, the sample is indeed becoming shorter because the surface tension is rounding the edges, not because the push rod is deforming it. Another nice feature of the optical dilatometer Misura LT is that even if the sample melts on the alumina plate, there is no danger of spoiling the measuring system. This is the result of the measurement on a ceramic body, in red, overlapped with different glazes. The editing software enables any kind of graphing elaboration to make comparison between the results obtained on different materials and obtained with all the instruments of the Misura family, like softening, melting, sintering, flexion, and so on. Another extraordinary application of the optical dilatometer Misura LT is the measurement of the thermal expansion on extremely thin samples, so thin that they cannot withstand their own weight. 
they must be non-transparent though. This is the picture of a green sheet with a thickness of 100 microns. The material is high-grade alumina bonded with PVA, tape cast with the Dr. Blade technology. The sheet is positioned on the sample holder for thin materials. The sample holder is then set on the two rods in the center of the kiln. The sample is free to move inside the sample holder and the two sides are lighted by the two beams of blue light. This is the outstanding result of the measurement on an aluminum foil with a thickness of only 10 microns. Up to 250 degrees centigrade the aluminum expands with an average thermal expansion coefficient of 24 by 10 minus 6. After this temperature there is a process of volume reduction which is caused by the rearrangement of the internal structure stressed by the cold rolling. Indeed after the last stage of cold rolling the material is not annealed and it retains all the rolling stresses. At 650 degrees C, the material melts after a sharp peak in the expansion. This is the graph of the test on the green ceramic tape with a thickness of 100 microns. The material starts expanding, but it undergoes a sharp contraction which starts at 243 degrees Celsius and it ends at 250 degrees. This volume reduction is caused by the burnout of the binder. Then it stays quite stable up to 456 degrees, but at this temperature it expands rapidly up to 499. After this it keeps expanding smoothly again. This is an unexpected behavior for this kind of material and it was investigated deeper. This is the graph of the comparison between two tests carried out on the ceramic tape, shown on a time base. The two heat treatments are quite different, since the first is a simple heating ramp with constant heating rate, while the second is a complex heat treatment, which required twice the total time and it also comprises two intervals at constant temperature in correspondence with the volume changes. Looking at the previous results with the temperature on the x-axis, we can easily draw the conclusion that these sharp volume changes cannot be eliminated working with the heat treatment, slowing down the heating or introducing intervals at constant temperature. This type of analysis it is possible only using this kind of instrument thanks to the fact that the measurement is absolute and it is possible to change the heating rate during the test. Furthermore, thanks to the total absence of mechanical pressure on the sample it is possible to carry out te the test even on materials which cannot withstand any pressure, even minimal.